We have our two commission chairman candidates who are set to uh, to debate here this evening. We have Wesley Weaver, who of course is the uh, the challenger, and the incumbent is, is Rob Jones. And we want to thank both gentlemen for being with us here tonight. I want to explain the rules a little bit to our gentlemen and also to you guys at home. We're going to allow three minutes per candidate on each question, plus a one minute rebuttal for each side if needed. If you don't feel like you need a rebuttal, then you don't have to take that, that option. But we will allow time for a rebuttal. I will be asking each question. Dan Poole from the Pickett's Progress has joined us. He's going to be the, the rebuttal guy here that will uh, jump in where needed as a, a journalist and maybe ask some follow-up questions. And of course, Ron Barnes is also our timekeeper, and he is the one that's, uh, that's wearing the referee jersey here tonight. He's the one officiating. So without further ado, we will go ahead and get started. I do want to remind the audience that the questions uh, that we will be asking here tonight were previously submitted from the community. And these questions uh, through the Chamber of Commerce were felt like general public concern. And so that's uh, where we have uh, what we have here tonight. Uh, both candidates were, were given a list of these questions so that they could come prepared tonight and uh, we could hear what they have to say. So with that, we will go ahead and, and jump right in. Is our timekeeper ready? Everyone's ready. Okay. First question. In the previous forum at the Tea Party, the challenger made several statements questioning the courthouse project. Would both candidates discuss the project as well as why voters should be pleased with it or conversely problems and deficiencies with the plans? We'll start with Mr. Jones first. If I may, Dave. Dave made a statement that I'm the incumbent. I will not be the incumbent. I am. This is a new position posed for Pickens County. It's a new form of government. So I would be the incumbent if it was going into a sole commissioner form of government. We were going to a multi-person board. So that does change. So if I may. My bad. I'm a sports guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, back in 08, back in 08, we voted on the SPLOS for, for the courthouse. That SPLOS, phase one of that SPLOS was $17.1 million for the courthouse. At the best plans we had at that time, that's what we worked towards to try to make that go after it was after it was passed. But as you know, there was two other plans that was involved in that process. We had two to three open meetings previous to that to see what the community actually wanted. They settled with the courthouse downtown to have it remodeled. The uh, after the bid to the courthouse came in this last few months, the actual courthouse, the courthouse itself, come in at 9.8 million. Now. That's the construction and the remodeling of the old courthouse and construction of the new one. Now we still got the roads and the infrastructure around the courthouse. We got the pavement. We're going to redo the sidewalks on both sides of, of the roads there going down Depot Street and up on the other side of the courthouse. We're having to redo the infrastructure on the back side. That's also putting in a railroad crossing at the tracks and a parking area behind the pig that'll, that'll hold about anywhere from 130 to 150 automobiles not only for, for jury uh, parking, but for downtown, for the city of Jasper to get some more parking for, for the city. It's looking like that when the project is totally done, we run some new numbers here the other day, it looks like that project is going to probably come in somewhere between 12 and $14 million. Now, I said earlier we had 17.1 that was voted in the SPLOS. So that project is approximately running $3 million under budget as we speak for tweaking in that project. Now, what everybody's got to remember, that courthouse has got four courtrooms in it. It's going to house all judicial system. And we've had, you know, people say, well, you know, the, the individuals that have to use that, those that are sitting in, in front of the judges, don't need that nice little building. That's up to everybody's individual decision there. But we have to have a show place for Pickens County for downtown Jasper. It's also a building that houses everybody that sits in this office here or in this building it houses your personal records your land deeds any other legal legislation you've got uh, so those are the purposes of the courthouse the uh, deficiencies of the one we had uh, granted no elevators we had a mold problem in that old courthouse uh, we were to the point that we were having to go out and borrow different areas to try to just have enough uh, courthouse space and then we were overbooked down at the courthouse annex behind. So at that point, I'm just going to let it go. Was that three minutes? You got, well, you got 10 more seconds. 10 more, well, 10 more seconds. <laughs> but that was, that was the purpose of the court, and it was voted on by the citizens of Pickens County. Thank you. Uh, I'm an attorney in Pickens County, and I, you know, I frequently go to the courthouse, and uh, I remember the annex not too long ago, about five years ago. 
the annex had a large courtroom, and uh, it, it was cut in half in a, in a $90,000 renovation project, the annex, but in the basement. It's a fairly large courtroom. Cut in half, now there's a, you know, it's a small courtroom with, with one bleacher for people to sit on. They have to stand down the hall. Before that was cut in half, uh, you know, there's plenty of room for the court downstairs. Now we're spending $17 million on a new courthouse. Uh, the, the sidebar restaurant and the old post office was traded for the new hospital, for the old hospital to make the new administrative building. $17 million to remodel the old building. I mean, that's, uh, that, that's, that's wasteful. Could have took the sidebar restaurant and turned it into courtrooms. Uh, you know, first it was the sidebar, then the, the Rocky Mountain, I mean, the Sharp Mountain Grill, and then it was the Crust Restaurant. Take, you know, if you've ever been in that restaurant, big nice stained glass windows could have simply turned those into courtrooms. But now, you know, they're building a parking lot behind the Piggly Wiggly. They're going to build the courthouse, tear the annex down, only 20 years old, build, build the new courthouse all the way out to the railroad tracks. No parking. They're going to have to park behind the Piggly Wiggly and walk up there. It's going to be a long walk, especially when it's raining. Uh, they're, you know, Spurs said we're going to have a, a covered walking path over a five-foot span of railroad tracks. Good thing they decided against that, how much that would have cost. But, you know, that was the original plan. Now, you know, it's just, it's just going to be a, a crosswalk. Cars are going to be going to have, have to go over the railroad track the same place people are. $50,000 for that concrete crossing, 200000 you know, to pay for, um, you know, railroad crossing arms to come down. People walking up, you know, potential to get hit by a car. Not a good idea. Should have built the courthouse, you know, if you needed a new one. Build it over by the jail. You know, save money on fuel transportation costs. Or, you know, the, the, the lot behind Ingalls used to be a driving range. Could have made a great place for, for the courthouse. Could have seen it from the highway. Anybody going down the interstate would said, what's that building? Well, that's, that's Pickens County Courthouse. You know, it, it would have been a, it would, it would have been a good uh, symbol of Pickens County and, and attract people here. Mr. Jones, some rebuttal. Well, the rebuttal, the only rebuttal I've got is the SPLOS that was voted, was voted on by the taxpayers of Pickens County. After the three plans, that was the plan they wanted, but the majority was to keep the courthouse in the middle of town and try to keep downtown vagrant and vibrant and keep businesses alive in downtown Jasper because we're seeing, seeing so many other communities die around the area by pulling the courthouse out of the middle of town. That was a vote that was voted on by the citizens of Pickens County. And they gave me my, when it was voted to approve, that was my marching orders to make it happen. Mr. Weaver, do you have anything to add? Somebody wrote the ballot. You know, somebody was responsible for writing $17 million to remodel the existing courthouse. More studies should have been done on that. Somewhere where the, uh, and, and, and the courthouse hadn't, you know, uh, moving the courthouse wouldn't, you know, make make the business on Main Street dry up. Main Street's, uh, you know, the economy's a, a, a big reason for Main Street's uh, problems. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Next question pertaining to the courthouse. Once the courthouse is complete, do you see any other government building or property needs in the next decade? And we'll start with Mr. Weaver. In the next decade, uh, we need to make better use of our water, pave our roads. Instead of spending you know, money on uh, $17 million courthouses, pave the roads, build the infrastructure, make it a place that uh, you know, business would, 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 would want to come here. Uh, in the next 10 years, we, you know, we're so far in debt Mr. Jones claims it's 2.6 million, but the hand that I gave him, given to y'all, shows it's you know 18, 18 million 174 thousand and change. That's from 2010 uh, audit. Who knows what it was in 2011? So we don't have the information. Mr. Jones hadn't provided the information uh, early enough for the 2011 audit, so we don't know how far the county's in debt now. Uh, we need to focus on infrastructure, building roads using the water we have to attract business to come here for new jobs. Where do you want me to go from that? Um, the, um, yes, in the next 10 years we need to do some more infrastructure. Uh, the library needs to be enlarged to support the needs of its citizens. Uh, that is an entity that, that gets used very, very much by the citizens of Pickens County. 
uh, also, of course, water, water, I'm sorry, and fire protection. Uh, as you know, in the last three years, we've been trying to build a full-time fire department for Pickens County. Uh, the reason for that, there's two reasons. One of them is the reason why you want a full-time fire department for Pickens County, number one, we were losing volunteer firefighters. But on the other hand, when you have a full-time fire station, what we're trying to do is work as a community to lower your ISO ratings. If y'all can save a thousand or two thousand dollars, I know on some homes, to lower your insurance ratings, it kind of lessens the sting if your taxes have to go up in the future. But that's what we're trying to do. And the city of Atlanta, uh, 1988, they finally went to a full-time fire department in the city of Atlanta. It took them a hundred years to build a full-time paid fire staff in the city of Atlanta. We're ahead of the curve on that one. But we've got 15 paid firefighters, and we're working for the future for that. The next 10 years, uh, it's going to be one of them. And of course, roads is an issue. And uh, as we go into another question, I'll discuss the roads further. Mr. Weaver, do you care to rebut? Hey, I also have notebooks in the back. Uh, Mr. Jones talks about these projects and you know new projects he wants to do, like expand the library. We're going to be in debt for several years to come. The uh, total debt as of 2004 was eight million nine hundred thousand in the six years to 2010 that's the only audit we have in six years the, the total debt increased ten million dollars ten million dollars over six years there was 20 million left over from the previous 2003 spots 20 million's gone I, I don't know where it went okay. Care to no okay we'll move on to the next question Pickens County's park system would be ranked last among all surrounding counties, and this is low, uh, lowly ranking is even with the new community center. From the miles of walking trails to the number of softball fields, Pickens is dead last in recreation. Is improving this a priority that we can afford? Let's start with Mr. Jones. The uh, don't know where you've got those numbers at, but uh, previous to my me being in office in the last eight years. What have we done down at the Recreation Department to improve what we've got uh, without breaking the budget? The, uh, we've got walking trails on 800 acres on Burnt Mountain that was, uh, that was put in voluntarily by the Mountain Stewards. That's recreation. We have, now we've got a new community center that we all talked about. We've got more soccer fields. We have increased the parking at the Recreation Center. We'd like to increase more. Uh, it is a priority, and I'll tell you why recreation is a priority for Pickens County. Everybody here is wanting economic growth. Only way you're going to achieve economic growth is to stabilize your taxes and furnish recreation. Some of your major companies that want to come in here, even though they might be small companies, there's two things they actually look at when they come into a community. And uh, I know it kind of sounds far-fetched. The cemeteries is one thing that they look at, and then your recreation is another. The way a community keeps up the cemeteries of a county <coughs> Uh, is is really impresses people when they come into the area so those are two items that we have to focus on but that's what you have to really be with for, for the recreation of the area so those are items that we are going to still feel as top priority okay mr. Weaver as far as the recreation center go the, the new community center mr. Jones borrowed at 6.5 million dollars to pay for it and the courthouse took that's a 6.5 million dollar bond barred that unnecessarily the school board when they were going to uh, charge mr jones uh twenty five thousand dollars to have rec ball a couple years ago instead of uh, you know trying to negotiate with the school board all the school board wanted was an actual community center that had to eat something other than basketball of course like an aquatic center the high school team swim team they need a place to have the swim meets and instead of uh, you know working with the school board and, and building a, com uh, a community center with a pool, uh, it pays the twenty-five thousand dollars, and then turns around and spends uh, one point eight million dollars for two basketball courts. That's a nine hundred thousand dollars per per court. Uh, that's excessive. And uh, because of this uh, you know short-sightedness and poor management of the budget, uh, sad to say, I'm, it's unfortunate. Probably not going to have any money in the budget for uh, any new community centers. Mr. Weaver, on that one, would you elaborate a little bit more on your thoughts on the importance of recreation? Do you think not what well, Mr. Jones said, but what do you feel we should do going forward with recreation? If, if it, it was possible, with, you know, within the budget, we had money to do it. 
what would be a good idea is what Mr. Farnham said previously. You know, everything's centered in Jasper. I live on the east side of the county, and and and, the, and the, you know, but there's nothing for kids to do, nothing for adults to do. Uh, you know, you can go walk down the road for exercise, but. Uh, some people don't don't have the means to get to, to the center of Jasper to use the center. There needs to be centers on each end of the county. Mr. Jones, you care to rebut? A quick one. The, uh, we, we can't compete with our neighboring counties. The reason why we can't compete with our neighboring counties on recreation, we don't have a Corps of Engineer Lake, such as Carter's Lake, Lanier, and Altoona. So they encompass that in their recreation areas. That's why the recreation numbers are more, a little more higher than Pickens. On the other hand, the way Cherokee, Gordon and other counties have expanded the recreation areas. If y'all go do the history on the lot behind them, is the properties were donated by families in those areas. The county did not have to go out and buy, and then the community got together and built a lot of those recreation parks, and then the counties did take them over. Now, of course, we would love to expand the <coughs> recreation in Pickens County. There's no doubt about that. Walking trails, whatever that we need to do. The uh, if somebody here owns a swimming pool. Uh, I'm sure it's probably one of the cheapest entities in your house to try to maintain a swimming pool from, from one month to the next. And I'm being a little facetious on that because I've got one myself that I'd like to make a tomato patch out of. But they are, they are a money pit. But we do the best we can to be able to balance the budget to keep from running that thing in the hole. The, uh, and, you know, I'm all, I'm all up for options and we need to come up with some plans. We do have a 20-year plan for Pickens County, contrary to popular belief. Recreation is one of them. We'll move on to the next question. Pickens County has been hit particularly hard by the recession as our local economy relied so heavily on real estate. What role does county government have, if any, in attracting jobs and new industry? We'll start with Mr. Jones on that. Not only has real estate been hit hard in Pickens County, but the construction industry, as most of you knew, as most of y'all know here, especially some of you bankers, that what we've been dealing with for the last two and a half years. Uh, Pickens County, as of two and a half years ago, we had formed an alliance with the city of Jasper to re-energize a joint community economic development uh, council here in Pickens County and for the city of Jasper. Jerry Nectaval was hired in that position to help bring the county forward. While he was there, he has implemented some facts with George Power to put a lot of our commercial buildings on the websites to where they're noticed not only statewide but outside of Pickens County. Uh, that office is, is paid for by Pickens County and the City of Jasper and his office here. That has been an, an asset to try to bring companies in here. And he has brought a few companies in, and we've got one or two more looking at Pickens County. The, uh, the commercial end of it is uh, we're looking at, uh, on the commercial end, looking at the Enterprise and Opportunity Zones. We've already got one of those set up down in Tate, Georgia, to give the employer that wants to set up a new business, state, uh, state take tax abatement for his employees up to, two, two, uh, I think it was uh, $2,500 a year to bring in new employees, get new businesses in there. For instance, Petrazzo down in Tate, we've got a new business coming in on the north end of town here in Pickens County, uh, and there's two or three more coming on board. So things are, things are starting to slow, but things are starting to pick up. Okay, Mr. Weaver. Uh, the current county administration shouldn't take uh, credit for any economic development that's happening in uh, Pickens County, because specifically, uh, all, all the economic, uh, you know, commercial influx has taken place down Interstate 515, and and, and, and the uh, you know the government responsible for that is not the county government, it's the city government. Uh, what the county needs to do is create an atmosphere where industry and small businesses want to locate here. We don't need to be. You know, anti-growth, and, and that's that's what we are now. We can't be anti-job growth. We don't have to be pro-growth. We just need to pre be prepared for what you know. Hopefully, could come here in the form of new industry. New industry wants to locate in a place where there's you know adequate roads, good paved roads, and, and a good adequate source of water. We're not taking advantage of you know e even the water lines we could be laying because we're paying for a seventeen million dollar courthouse. So. We're not going to be able to, you know, lay water lines to, to do that. Tax breaks are a good idea. Tax breaks here, you know, in direct proportion with how many jobs they'll promise to bring here. Uh, job, uh, industry that wants to bring more jobs here, they should get a, a larger tax break for a, for a longer period of years. You know, $2,500, you know, just to come here, you know, that's, that's, that's not, a, you know, attractive for them. 
look to actually contacting businesses to visit Pickens County, to come here and see what Pickens County has to offer. You know, putting pictures of what's going on on, on, on the highway is a good start, but we need to actually seek these people out and, and show them what Pickens County has to offer. Mr. Jones, you care to rebuttal? With the same group I talked about with the joint development, uh, joint development of Pickens in the uh, city of Jasper, uh, we are looking at a uh, proposed tax abatement plan for bringing those companies in and giving them some property abatements for either five to ten years, but we want to come up with a utilized plan that can be uniform across the board, not just piecemeal one company or the next, and, and not put a detriment to the taxpayers of Pickens County. The last one we want is a company to come in, get a five-year tax abatement, and in uh, five years, they go on to another county. We've got to make them stay, and we've got to make it worth their while to come here, and then also we've got to make an agreement with them that's more substantial than what we've had in the past. Mr. Weaver, do you have a response? Twenty-five hundred dollars is not enough. You got to have a business, you know, to, to come here. If they come and build a building here, you know, they're not going to leave in five years. Okay. All right. Moving on. Water supply, water lines are cited as a primary infrastructure need. Why do we need this additional resource at this time, and what plans do you have to address it? And also, why is sewage infrastructure not as needed? We'll start with Mr. Weaver on this one. Infrastructure is the most important because the infrastructure will, you know, attract outside growth. I mean, out, outside investment and job growth, uh, adequate water and good roads. I mean, that's that's what's needed. Uh, not, you know, seventeen million dollar courthouses. You know, the same two hundred fifty people show up in court, you know, every month. Uh, it's it's uh, don't need to build a you know a big multi million dollar complex all the way out to a, to a set of railroad tracks five foot wide have people, you know, walk that far to the courthouse. That's not parking for Main Street. I guess it's parking for uh, what was formerly the Hare Hutch, now, you know, what, what the county bought to be the Board of Elections building. Mr. Jones? The, uh, we've come a long way with the, with the water and the construction of water lines in the county's uh, water service delivery area. As most of you know, House Bill 49 limited us. What happened on House Bill 49, Pickens County's property is on the east side of the county and on the west side of the county. And in the city of Jasper's House Bill 49 water service delivery area is one third of the center of, of Pickens County. But what goes on there is the fact that we transfer water across and we're partnering with the city on that, uh, on those lines. And we buy water back and forth from the city and the county. Along with those water lines that we have built to all four corners of the county, such as Dawson County, Cherokee County, Gordon County, and also Gilmer County, and my predecessor before me set up the arrangement to get with Gordon County, built the lines on that end. I'm not going to take full credit for that. He did a good job getting that, getting that brought forward to that point. But we have worked hard by state, state plans to bring this water to all four corners of the county where we can share water or buy water or sell water to our neighbors. Henceforth, up there on Steve Tate Highway. We run water up there and we furnish water to Dawson County Fire Department up there right across from, from Northgate at Bent Creek. So there's things that we're doing. The, uh, as, for, uh, as for sewage, with, uh, with the sewage infrastructure, when you look at the mountainous topography of Pickens County, it is not just a quick, easy fix. Uh, you have to deal with pumping stations. I know the city of Jasper has to deal with a lot of pumping stations. When we go out outside the county, it gets, it gets a little more harder to accomplish that. And it takes a lot of money to do that, to build that infrastructure for sewage. There is other, other plans that can be used. They have got package, package systems now that you can use that. But the biggest thing what we're trying to do is, is partner with entities such as, such as maybe Big Canoe, maybe use part of their sewage for the Foothills area. We are already got an agreement with Big Canoe to either buy water or sell water into Big Canoe for, uh, for emergency situations, or if they want to sell water. We're trying to work out, hopefully in the future, we can work out a deal with, uh, with Bent Tree. Henceforth, they've already got reservoirs. We know it takes 15 years, a minimum of 15 years, to build a reservoir in the county. Uh, EPD guidelines, DNR, uh, your, your individuals, when you got all these critters floating around in the, in the streams that you have to do environmental studies on, cost the county or a city multi-millions of dollars. Henceforth, you're seeing what's going on down in Cherokee County with the one they've got down for the city of Jasper, I mean the city of Canton, along with uh, Cobb County. But that's what we're doing, and, uh, and we're setting plans apart. 
as most of you know, I sit, I'm the chairman of the Kusawati Water and Sewer Authority now. That was an authority that was formed here three years ago. And with Gilmer County Water and Sewer, City of Calhoun Water and Sewer, and Murray County Water and Sewer. So those type of things that we're planning for the future for the next 20 years is what we're trying to get accomplished here in Pickens County. Mr. Weaver, do you have a rebuttal? Apart from being the, uh, the president of the Kusawati uh, you know, Water Club, uh, Mr. Jones had not done anything. Uh, he's, he's trying to take credit, like he said. I'm surprised he said it. For the uh, previous administration running uh, running water from uh, the west side of the county all the way to the east side of the county, uh, he, he can't take credit for that. Uh, the fact is, we're not adequately using the water we have now, and uh, with, 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 with the debt the way it is, you know, a reservoir is not uh, not not possible. Uh, we've spent too much money. Money's going to things like an uh, in, in inflated uh, budget for the commissioner's office. Uh, I want to know why Mr. Jones' salary is $105,731 when, uh, you know, he's supposed to make $1,200 more than the highest paid county official who makes $69,000. He's making $35,000 too much. <laughs> Mr. Jones, you have a response? Since that deal is water, I think my salary is liquidity, isn't it? Uh, the, uh, no, no response to that. We're going to take care of that on end of the program. We'll take the questions. Okay, next question. <clears throat> One word answer we'll do here, but we'll, we'll give you guys a minute to, to explain uh, this next one. We asked it of our district candidates earlier. Do you favor a senior school tax exemption for Pickens property owners? Yes or no? And we'll start with, uh, we'll start with Mr. Weaver on this one. I would like to say yes, but unfortunately, you know, in, in the very near future, it's just not going to be possible because the county's $18 million in debt, not $2.6 million as the commissioner claims. But, you know, seniors, you know, trying to prepare for retirement, it's not fair that they should be burdened by, you know, excessive property taxes. And, you know, have, have we saved money over, over the course of the last eight years? You know, something like a host, a home set option sales tax would have been, uh, you know, possible. But not with a you know thirty four million dollar spots you know that's you know recently been passed half of that seventeen million going towards the courthouse and uh, what what Mr Jones wants to take care of is he's going to tell you that uh, he's he's a, a, with regard to his salary that uh, he's going to call it the Billy Walford effect that he was locked in at his salary when uh, Billy Walford retired that's not what the law says the law says you make twelve hundred dollars more than the highest paid county official. When Mr. Donnie Craig was elected, the highest paid county official became him at 69000 Mr. Jones still, for, for, for the past you know four years, has made $35,000 too much. Okay, Mr. Jones. I hate to spin it. Um, the, um, the yes or no answer to your homestead, I think the group that was previous to us did a very good job bringing that out. At this time, I'm not in favor of a, of a school tax exemption. Uh, it has nothing to do with county taxes. It has something to do with school taxes, and that's what we need to focus on. The uh, the school tax exemption uh, right now in Pickens County, as most of y'all heard earlier, is $25,000 or less for, for a family that makes that. They get 100% school tax exemption status on that one. We would like to probably raise it to 30, 35 in the future and get that, get that done. At this time, I don't foresee a 100% school tax exemption with the uh, senior citizens that we have moving in at 17%. At, at, at this time, it's not feasible. And another option you have to look at, when you start bringing in commercial growth, that's one of the things they look at is their tax base. If they know that they've got to pay more tax than, and, the, and the citizens that have to work for them have to pay more tax, it kind of it defers commercial growth coming, in, coming into a, to a, either a city or a county government. Mr. Weaver, I'd like to follow up on the yes or no full exemption. I, mean, I know you said there's debt, we couldn't do it. If the debt was not there, would you be in favor of looking at it? If the debt wasn't there, I would be in favor in, of, in looking at it. In fact, I've, I've, um, you know, at the, uh, the Saturday thing they had at Big New, I said it's, it's not fair that you know seniors have to bear that tax burden. But right now, you know, in the near future, it's not possible because we're so far in debt. All right, let's move on. Okay, what are your thoughts on the T-Splost? And we will start with uh, with Mr. Jones this time. The T-Splost or the transportation splost is something the DOT is trying to pass. 
It's one cent sales tax for roads. Now this item, you don't have enough time this evening to discuss it. And uh, it is something that y'all need to be aware of. The, uh, the Tea Party is going to have a seminar on this, I think, in about the next Tea Party, I believe, to give, give some insight on this uh, one cent sales tax for the Tea Sploss or the Road Sploss money. Uh, make a quick statement on that. Uh, I'm not in favor, uh, by no means, of the legislation that is written at this time, because what it's done to us, it's, it's made Pickens County into a donor county. We've discussed SPLOS. I know it's kind of went in, in different directions here, but we have discussed SPLOS. Normally a five-year SPLOS in Pickens County brings in approximately $30 million. A 10-year SPLOS, when you go to this thing here, is approximately $60 million. If the projects were promised, projects that were promised to be done in Pickens County are done and this thing passes, we're just going to get $46 million out of the deal. So again, we are a donor county. Our, account, our money that we're paying is going somewhere else. There was a proposal made when, we, when this was discussed over a year and a half ago that the county commissioners and the mayors would probably support a one cent sales tax on this if and only if that they would guarantee that the county would get back 85 percent of the money that the citizens put into this project let the dot keep the 15 percent at that time we were sat down and said the counties don't know how to spend their money correctly so that's that's what the issues we've got with that uh, you're taking control out of your tax money by sending it to the state and let them tell you how they're going to spend your money. All right, Mr. Weaver. Uh, vote, vote no on the t spots It's a 1% sales tax for the next 10 years. It's expected to generate $19 billion statewide. We're in a region with 14 other counties. These include Day, Catoosa, Whitfield, Murray, Fannin, Gilmer, Gordon, Walker, Chattooga, Floyd, Bartow, Polk, Harrison, and Paulding. If, uh, if every single person in Pickens County voted no to the peace laws, it could still pass and we'd still be bound by it. If, uh, if, if, if four of the, uh, you know, the, the least populous counties, if they voted no by 70% 70, 70 only the four largest counties would have to vote yes by 61% and it would still pass. Uh, we need to be, you know, Pickens County, if, if, if a tax dollar is collected here, it should stay here. It shouldn't be sent to some regional roundtable who will decide, you know, where to spend the money. Uh, we know best how to spend the money in Pickens. Not only that, it, it, it arguably violates the Constitution. I compare it to Obamacare. If, if uh, Obamacare passes and is allowed to stand, you're going to have to have a mandate, you know, to pay for um, insurance. Well, this is what this is. It's a mandate saying we're, we're going to have to pay for another county's infrastructure. If we're going to get 75% cents on the dollar, you know, What's, what's the benefit in that? You know, keep the whole dollar here in Pickens County. Any additional comments? The, uh, he's right, but other than the fact that we've got 15 counties in the Northwest Georgia RC region, the uh, and some of his numbers are, are correct. He is right to the fact that we can be overrode by Paulding County, Floyd County, Whitfield County. They have enough voters if they want to pass this thing. Uh, it didn't matter how Pickens, Gilbert, and Fannin voted, we could wind up getting caught up in this thing without any control over it. That is true. The, uh, I would, there is the mayor of Dalton, for instance, is, is formed a committee to fight it on, around that area. Other counties in the Northwest Georgia RC are fighting it. Now most of your counties closer to Atlanta, such as Paulding, which is a big county, uh, might go for it. We just don't know exactly what's going to happen down in Paulding County. But we have to deal with, with Bartow County, Paulding County, Whitfield County, and Floyd County, and as well as Gordon County. It's got 75 running up the middle of it. So those monies can be diverted to those areas, even though they have promised us that, that we'd be able to hold them here. I don't believe that. Any additional comments? I just want to say, you see these commercials on TV, it's, it's, it's a ball of roads, and it says untied Atlanta. The theory is, that, you know, this money spent down the metro area will free up the roads, free up traffic, allow, you know, uh, people from Atlanta and more populous areas to come to the north and south. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just not for it. We should, you know, we should spend our own tax money here. Sounds like you guys are kind of on the same side of the issue there, right? That's one. There we go. That's, there we go. Okay. Well, don't worry. This next question will probably even it back up. The next question. We'll start with Mr. Jones on this one. Discuss the current state of the county's finances. Well, you are going to fire it up, aren't you? <laughs> we have on the website, we have put our audits 
our budgets and all on the county website for since 06. To give you, give you an overview, I'm just gonna give you a quick one. 06, millage rate, 6.26. 07, millage rate, 6.133. 08, millage rate, 5.895. We were able to roll it back a little bit that year because of sales tax revenues. 09, 010, and 2011, millage rate, 6.26. We were able to keep the millage rate the same even though the last two and a half years the overall property values have declined. What everybody has to remember, even with a $19 million budget for the county, less than half of that comes from your property taxes. The other half of that comes from sales tax revenues, ad valorem taxes for car tax, those type of entities. Granted, it still, don't, it still hits you in the pocket, but don't get me wrong. And I grant, I, I'm, I'm in full compliance to the fact that Mr. Dobbs has or the assessor's board, as well as some of their staff, has some issues of trying to equalize the value of the property. That's not, I'm not going to debate that. I'm in all compliance with that. But by state law, I get to appoint the assessor's board. After that, I can't have any undue influence on, on that board. And Roy Dobbs does not work for me, nor does the, any part of the assessor's board. They work for the tax assessors. So that's how that particular part is set up at Lincoln County. But at 6.26 mills for a county, uh, we're one of the lowest north of I-20. And contrary to what my opponent's gonna say, long-term debt in Pickens County is 2.6 million. I can't pay an $18 million debt without raising the millage rate in the last three years. It just can't happen. Numbers don't work. Sure, he's got papers. I can print you papers and write that, uh, write that I'm Batman, if you wanna believe that one. But the problem is, is to, to say that you've got an $18 million debt in Pickens County, that's why the county hires new auditors every three years to keep everything on the up and up. We don't have an $18 million debt in Pickens County. As of 2010, there was an $18 million debt. Uh, hand you a, he gave you a handout, a four-page handout. The second page, long-term debt, note number nine, halfway down the page. $6 million in governmental activities, long-term liabilities. For water, business-type activity, long-term liabilities, over 12 million, 12 million is 6 million, 18 million. It's 18 million 174,632. Now, it, like Mr. Jones says, it may no longer be 18 million. I don't know what it's increased to since last year. The problem is the audit for the 2011 budget hadn't been done because uh, you know he's late about it. If you're looking at the 2010 budget, and the, it's in these notebooks in the back. If you look at the 2010 budget, the audit said it was late. It was, it was uh, the, the information for, for the, the uh, firm of Malden and Jenkins to do the audit was late. This year, it, it, it's real late. He hadn't even, uh, he just now has hired a, a, a new accounting firm, much less given the information. So it's, it's probably higher than 18 million. Look on the second page. I didn't write these papers. This comes from the uh, Georgia Department of Audit's website. You can go look at that on, 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 online. This is page 28 from the Department of Audit's website. Mr. Jones, your vote. The 2010 audit was late. If all you remember, in 2010, the reason why the audit was late, we asked for a six-month extension granted by the state of Georgia. You know why they granted us a six-month uh, extension on the 2010 audit? Everybody remember the tornadoes? We about shut whole county government down and cleaned up a mess on the other county that caused us to have to pull people out of the office to go out there and work on that project. It took nearly two and a half months to get that early cleaned up. That's why we got a six month extension in 2010. The audit was done in 2010. Another thing everybody has to remember in Pickens County is our fiscal year runs from January 1st to December 31st. The fiscal year of a school system is from June, I'm sorry, from July to June. So. Those two entities different, and a lot of people get them confused. My audit is not due till the end of this year for 2011, but the audit's finished. We're just waiting to get a printout from the from the uh, new audit company. And we do change audit firms every three years just because we think it's a good idea to change them. Any additional comments, Mr. Weir? The, uh, I think the reason the audit companies were changed is the last page of my handout, page 56. The audit company reported internal control uh, over the financial reporting and material weakness identified, significant deficiencies identified, uh, 
non-compliance uh, material to financial statements noted. All these boxes are checked. You know, read the audit. We're going to move on to one of our final questions here. We're running out of time. The last question that was uh, given to the, uh, the candidates uh, ahead of time was, what do you see as the chief transportation road needs in this county, and how would you address it? And we'll start with, with Mr. Weaver for this question. In the last few weeks, uh, I've never seen the road paving that's been going on. Um, you know, uh, over the course of the last eight years, where were all these roads been paved? Now in the last month, all, all, all these roads are being paved. And I don't know where the county's getting the money to do it. Uh, January 20th, this year, the county took out a, a tax anticipated note. And that's a loan from a bank. They, they took it out in, in the amount of $6 million. And uh, they offered it you know, for bids to the banks to see the, low, the, the lowest bid. The four banks that bid on it were Jasper, uh, Jasper Banking Company, United Community Bank, the Royal Bank of Canada and Wells Fargo. Uh, the county picked Wells Fargo. You know, bank local. I don't know if there's a Wells Fargo in Pickens County. The closest one I know is in Kenton. Uh, even if Jasper Bank and United Community Bank had a slightly higher interest rate, you know, why not keep that money in the county? I think he's took this six million dollars, more debt, and he's uh, using it to pay these roads right before the election. Uh, Six million dollars more on, on, on the county's credit card. Uh, this money's going to pay back, be paid back before the end of this year, December 31st. Used to, people had a you know up till February, the middle of February, to pay their taxes. That's why it's been changed to pay taxes within you know the fiscal year because Mr. Jones is going to pay this uh, six million dollars back from a, you know from Wells Fargo Bank. Why not Jasper Bank or, or, or United Community Bank? You want to respond to that or you want to read more? <laughs> it's your time. <laughs> Six million dollars. County, Pickens County in the past has always used a tax anticipation note. That is nothing unusual. We try to do it within the county government or in the county process over boundaries. We put that bid out for all the banks in Pickens County. The reason why Wells Fargo or Wells Fargo got the bid is their interest rate coming sometimes quite lower and we're looking out for the taxpayers of Pickens County. School system Pickens County does that tax anticipation notes. So that's that. I'm gonna leave it at that for right now because we don't got time. But I'd like to get to this. The upgrading in your to your question, what do we see as chief transport transportation road needs in the county and how you address it? The upgrading of Highway 53 in the downtown Jasper needs to be the top list of priority of DOT projects. It has been long overdue for an upgrade. As for the county, we have 450 miles of paved road and 105 <coughs> miles of dirt roads in Pickens County not including the city of Jasper or state highways that are in the county. So y'all do the math. We're, we're on the average, we're doing 10 miles a year is what we're doing. When I first took office, we were paving approximately three miles. We are now got that up from five to seven. Now we're doing 10 miles a year. When I took office in 05, we were averaging approximately four miles resurfacing a year. Now that number has increased to 10 miles. We were receiving, we were receiving before the economy collapsed around $500,000 to a million dollars from the DOT to have paved these roads. The last three years, they have cut us to zero. This year, we're getting $315,000 for resurfacing. So, I'm saying that to say this, 450 miles of paved road in Pickens County. We're doing 10 miles a year. It would take you 45 years to resurface every road in Pickens County. Your normal wear and tear on a good asphalt road is 15 to 20 years. And you still got to go back and hit, hit places there. I'm taking the dirt roads out of the picture. I'm just talking about paved roads. It is a balancing act. Maybe, hopefully, depending on what we do in the next loss, roads needs to be top priority for the citizens of Pickens County for the next loss to get us that money in there. But it's costing you approximately eighty to $100,000 a mile to pave a road. And that's with the county owning its own equipment. Now, if you take and you sub that out to a C.W. Matthews or something like that, you can two and a half times that price because of, of contract equipment and contract laborers you've got there. That's why we own our own equipment. That's why we were able to extend the miles for the, for the least amount of money we get from the state. Mr. Weaver, for both. Paved roads, uh, not always characterized as unpaved and paved. Paved roads are probably getting so bad they could be characterized as unpaved roads. 
Now, why not focus on the 100 miles of unpaved roads? You know, with $17 million for a courthouse, you, know, they, you, you could pave every unpaved mile of a road in the county twice and pave every uh, mile of paved road, you know, fix it. Uh, 10 miles a, a year is just not adequate. There's a place on the west side of the county, Farland Road, Scenic View Road, uh, you know, up near, near the Dairy Queen, between the Dairy Queen and the high school. Terrible roads. More focus paid on the road, paid to the roads. Mr. Jones, any additional comments on that? Well, the road paving is an issue. I'm not disputing that quite a bit. We've got areas in the county that we're trying to accomplish them on some new regulations to incorporate some more subdivision roads into the county. But these are things that we have to work towards for the next for the next process and see what we're going to do to come up with the money to do that for. If the citizens want me to raise the taxes, we can pave all the roads in Pickens County you want to. But those are an issue, and they will always be an issue. The reason why we have 107 miles of dirt road left, believe it or not, we have people that have bought property on those roads that have horses that do not want those roads paved. We have tried. We've got that number down. We've paved about 25 miles. But believe it, we've got people that don't want their roads paved for uh, numerous reasons. One of them, they've got horses. They like to ride on dirt road. Number two, it cuts down traffic. They don't want to have people zipping up and down in front of their house all the time. That's, that's the issue you have, and that's what you're looking at. We are never, probably unless... Only people that want the road, dirt roads paved is only people that want to use it for a cut through. Thank you. We're, we're uh, basically out of time, but we're going to give you guys each each a minute here to uh, to uh, say anything that maybe you, you didn't get a chance to say and, and basically try to persuade the, the voters that are in attendance here today to, to vote for you. So we'll start with uh, we'll start with Mr. Weaver, and you've got one minute. We need to vote on July 31st to install a panel of commissioners who will restore the core values of Pickens County, advocating for an open, honest, accountable government that serves the public interest, not the private interests, who encourages ordinary people to make their voices heard in the political process. We need to vote for a trio of commissioners who serve this county with an independent voice for the common good, not beholden to special interests and influence peddling, commissioners who keep a watchful eye against corruption and good old boy politics, against ethics violations and abuses of power, Commissioners who respect grassroots efforts and keep open ears to new ideas and innovation from wherever and whomever those ideas may come from. Only the citizen can bring about change to the political system and bring the Pickens County government back to life. Make it responsive and accountable and keep it honest. No one but the individual citizen can, and I appreciate your vote for County Commissioner Chairman on July 31st. My name is Wesley Weaver. Mr. Jones, one minute. People of Pickens County have blessed me with the opportunity to be your commissioner for two terms. First time that has happened in over 22 years in Pickens County. It has been a job that I have really enjoyed. It has been a job that you put in about 12 hours a day, some days, six days a week, and part time on Sunday. That's part of the bit, part of what you have to do to sacrifice yourself to the citizens of Pickens County. My office has always been open. I have never turned anybody away. And I have tried to return anybody's phone call that I've called that day. You might not have got the answer when we talked, but I have tried to respond to you as quick as possible, and hopefully within that 24-hour period. As we go through and form a new form of government for Pickens County, it would be beneficial that I would set the helm on that to where I would, I don't want to say lead these people in certain directions because they're their own thinkers, but it would help to have somebody on board to, to give them a guiding light on how we bring this county into the next next system. Thank you very much, and please, I'm asking for you both. Candidates, thank you very much. How about a round of applause?